The Prophet Sulaiman was once walking with his entire entourage and his entourage is not like the entourage of anyone else. He has the birds forming a canopy above him. He's got the humans at his disposal, animals, insects, and even jinn are moving at his order And as he's walking by with this entourage, he passes by a worshiper and the worshiper, who's a humble man, he looks at Sulaiman and he says, Ya ibn Dawood, laqad a'ataak Allahu mulkan azeema. O son of David, Allah has given you a magnificent kingdom. So Sulaiman salam, he heard what the man said and he stops the entire entourage and he goes up to that man and he says, you see this entire kingdom of mine, all of it with its glory? He says, Wallahi, latasbihatun fi sahifati mu'min khayru mimma u'ti ibn Dawood. He said, I swear by Allah that one tasbih, one word of glorifying Allah from any believer is better than all of this which has been given to the son of David. Fama u'ti ibn Dawood yadhab, because everything that's been given to the son of David is going to perish. What tasbihatu tabqa. And this tasbih of yours is going to remain forever. SubhanAllah, in one moment, you can plant a tree in paradise that is greater than the greatest kingdom of all time to exist in this world. Now we've spoken about the gardens, the soil. Now, what do you plant in those gardens? What does it look like to actually harvest the crops of those gardens? The Prophet ﷺ said, I met Ibrahim ﷺ on the night of Al Isra' wal Mi'raj, on the night journey. And he said, Ya Muhammad, aqri ummataka minni salam. Oh Muhammad, give my salam to your ummah. Wa alayka salam. Ibrahim ﷺ sending salam to us through our Prophet Muhammad. ﷺ. And he said, Ya Muhammad, tell your ummah that paradise is. It's a land whose soil is pure and its water is sweet. And he said, it's an empty white plain and the trees of that plain are planted with SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. So you plant trees in paradise with your tasbih. And you think about how many trees we have failed to plant in our garden, SubhanAllah. And what are these trees like? So let's actually go through the descriptions. And this takes some time when you go through the Quran and the Sunnah of the various trees and plants that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions to us. So let's start with the smallest plants in paradise. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions to us that in paradise, there are aromatic plants, so everything smells good, of course. فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نَعِيمٌ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, so there is rest and rayhan, rayhan, and rayhan literally is sweet smelling plants. And here it's used as a symbol of complete satisfaction. So if you think about your eyes being closed and you're laying down in Jannah, and you smell the plants that are all around you, and the plants don't necessarily have to be outdoor. So that's just the plants that I had. So what are the trees like if the flowers and plants are so beautiful that you would admire them for decades without worrying about the time? For one, the Prophet ﷺ said that the trees of paradise are of dhahab, they are of gold. And in one narration from Ibn Abbas anhuma, they are green emerald with branches of red gold. And of course, there's diversity in Jannah. And if you think about the trees of this world, What's the least attractive part of the tree? It's the trunk, right? But here in Jannah, the trunk itself is so striking. Imagine the trunk itself is made of gold and emerald. And then the branches and what those branches bear is even better. Even the branches themselves, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, ذَوَاتَا afnan, Lush branches, lush branches. Let's not even talk about the production, just what they look like. And then he goes on to say in Surah Al-Rahman, afnan, that in these gardens, there is plentiful fruits, palm trees, pomegranates. And SubhanAllah, the wonder of these trees is that the beauty doesn't compromise what they produce and vice versa. You know, usually beautiful trees don't have anything to bear in this life. But look at how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala describes them in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Fi sidrin makhdood, wa talhin mandood, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, you have thornless lote trees, 
banana clustered with spreading shade, constantly flowing water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرًا لَا مَقْطُوعَةٍ وَلَا مَمْنُوعَةٍ And you have abundant fruit, never out of season, never out of stock. Now, if you know trees, you'd notice that this is really out of this world. And so one day, a Bedouin came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah has mentioned a tree in paradise that drives us crazy. And I don't think that there is a tree that causes more harm to people than this tree. And Rasulullah said, what tree are you talking about? He said, the Sidr, this lot tree, it drives us crazy here. It has all sorts of thorns. And the Prophet said, well, doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say Sidrin Mahdud, a thornless lot tree? The Arabs had never seen that before. And what it is, is that the Prophet said, Allah has removed all of the thorns of the tree and replaced every thorn with a fruit. So the same place that we knew the tree to have thorns, it now bears fruit instead. Now you may have noticed, I also said bananas. Talhin manlud. And yes, banana trees in Jannah are amazing. And Imam Malik rahimahullah, he loved bananas for this reason, because he said they're the most similar to the fruits of paradise. And unlike all the other fruits in this world, because you can find them in any season of the year. But don't feel guilty if you're not crazy over bananas here, because you will be in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. So this is the general theme of trees in the Quran. They're lush, they're beautiful, and they are satisfying. But then we have some specific trees that are mentioned in the Sunnah. And first you have this tree that the Prophet ﷺ said, takes a hundred years to cross. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, spreading shade, lidlin mamdud, the Prophet ﷺ said, there is a tree in paradise that a swift rider on a swift horse would take a hundred years to pass beneath. And some of the scholars say, perhaps this is referring to the tree known as Tuba. Now, Tuba, you may have heard the word, like the word Kawthar, it has a general meaning of glad tidings, but it specifically refers to a tree in paradise as well. Just like how Kawthar can refer to the specific Kawthar, the fountain of the Prophet Sallallahu or it can refer to glad tidings. So in the famous hadith, when the Prophet Sallallahu says, Tuba lil ghuraba glad tidings to the strangers. Specifically, this may mean glad tidings to the strangers of the tree of Tuba in paradise. And there is a connection here. You are to be a stranger in this life, just like a traveler, as the Prophet ﷺ said, who takes a break under a tree and then proceeds with his journey. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying the reward for that is a permanent tree that you forever rest under as a believer in your actual home. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Tuba liman ra'ani wa amana bi he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tawbah for the one who saw me and believed in me, and Tawbah for the one who did not see me yet still believed in me. And he repeated this seven times Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the way of the stranger. We cling to the example of the one who already passed from under this tree of dunya. And we wait to be gathered with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam under the tree of Tawbah in paradise that was promised to us through him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, what's so special about this tree of Tulba? The Prophet Sallallahu said that this isn't just a huge tree in Jannah, but it's also the tree that produces the fabric for the clothing of the people of paradise. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tulba is a tree in paradise that has a journey of a hundred years under its shade and the clothes of the people of paradise come out from the outer parts of its flowers. And there was a Bedouin, once again, who asked the Prophet ﷺ the question, and they always used to ask the Prophet ﷺ questions. They said, so are the clothes woven or are they created? And people laughed and the Prophet ﷺ said, why are you laughing? He said, they grow out of the branches of the trees of paradise. So yes, clothes actually come out of the branches of this particular tree in Jannah, subhanAllah. And how strange and what a beautiful reward for the strangers. Another tree the Prophet ﷺ mentioned is Shajrat al-Shuhada, a special tree for the martyrs. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the souls of the believers are birds hanging from a tree of paradise until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns them to their bodies on the day of resurrection. And of course, with the Shuhada, they have their own specific tree, their own particular place 
where they get to enjoy the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the tree of Al-Jannah. Then of course, there is not just any Sidra, not just any Lot tree, but Sidra Al-Muntaha, the ultimate Lot tree, which marks the highest boundary of paradise. And this is the only place that the Prophet ﷺ saw Jibreel ﷺ in his full form other than the revelation of Surah Al-Muddathir. So he said that Jibreel ﷺ at that point was staring upwards and he was in awe and it was like he was flattened ﷺ. And he said وسلم, that when I reached that low tree, Sidrat Al-Muntaha, he said its fruit looked like the clay jugs of Hajar. Its leaves were like the ears of elephants. And one of those leaves could cover the whole of this ummah. And he said it had colors that are absolutely indescribable. And SubhanAllah, if, you, if you've ever been to the bottom of the ocean, scuba diving or snorkeling or whatever it may be, and you've seen the colors at the bottom of the ocean, they're not just incredible, they're actually indescribable. So imagine if that's the color at the bottom of the ocean, what the colors in the highest heavens are. And some of the scholars, they make an observation about our connection as Muslims to the idea of the lot tree and the application of the lot tree. And that is when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered upon his daughter as she had passed away. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wash her bima'in wa sidrin, wash her with water and then some of the leaves of the lot tree and put on her kafura, camphor in it in the last wash in particular. So we have connections to the trees of paradise and how we plant trees now and how we reflect those trees in our lives. And SubhanAllah, you even see that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describes the faith of the believer like what? Like a palm tree, but not just any palm tree. He says Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Asluha thabit wa far'uha sama. Its foundations are strong and its branches are high in the sky. It produces fruit at all time by the permission of the Lord. So the tree of faith is not seasonal and the trees that it produces in paradise are consistent as well. And the reward of the believer who is like a tree to everyone else in this life is literally trees that extend their shade in paradise and beautiful low-hanging fruits always in production and within reach. And the more that the fruit of your knowledge is beneficial to others, the more the fruit of your reward in the hereafter. So the Prophet wasallam said, when the Muslim visits his sick brother or sister, he is harvesting the fruits of paradise until he returns. So it's not just that the visit itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you with a garden, but every single moment that you are there and bringing comfort to that person, Allah is harvesting fruit for you and increasing your share. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always bless you with more, even when you think you're doing so little. So whether it's that one tasbih, subhanAllah, or when the Prophet ﷺ said, the lowest branch of Iman is removing a branch from the road, the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw a man strolling in paradise. Because in this dunya, he saw a branch of a tree laying on the ground and he removed it because he said, I don't want this to harm the believers. And as a result, what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him trees in paradise under which he can stroll and he can enjoy everything that is there. So you have your trees, you have your garden, you have your fruit. Now, how sweet will the rivers be beneath you? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati